five major steps for ships to become part of the naval fleet, and it takes several years. The first, the naming, which happened in 2015. The second, the keel laying ceremony, marking the beginning of construction. That was in August 2020. The third, the christening this Saturday in Connecticut, followed by a year of sea trials to make sure that the boat floats, and then a commissioning ceremony to officially enter the fleet. 208's Andrew Bartline and photojournalist Kevin Esslinger, they traveled all the way to Connecticut for the christening tomorrow. Andrew joins us live now from the East Coast. Andrew, I can see it's getting dark out there. How's it going? Well, I'm going to blame you for that, Joe. The sunset was beautiful just a few moments ago. If you'd read a little faster, you could have gone out here, could have showed you this beautiful Atlantic Ocean sunset. But I can show you the USS Nautilus right now. This boat's really interesting as the first, the world's first nuclear powered submarine. And it was created in part by technology developed at INL, what we know it to be today. It had a previous name uh, before, but uh, cool piece of history. Idaho ties out here in Groton, Connecticut, USS Idaho christening as well. You said that christening is the third of five steps. I'm going to rewrite that for you, Joe. Uh, this Native American blessing actually was the third for the USS Idaho, bumping the christening that we'll see tomorrow back to fourth. A career in the Navy really puts the fleet in fleeting. This is my fourth. But Commanding Officer Leslie. I've been entrusted with such a responsibility. He's still due a first. This is very unique. Before the big christening, Idaho's native tribes are offering a personal blessing. And not just to the boat, but to the new USS Idaho crew. They shared a peace pipe packed with bitterroot mountain herbs from the highest point in the gem state. And the moment to pass on wisdom was far from lost. We talked a lot about being a warrior, and there's a link there between just the military service that uh, many of them have experienced, but on, on back to uh, the thousands of years and the, you know, the warriors that have existed in their culture. I don't know of any other ship has, that's conducted a ceremony like this as part of their christening. Did you smoke the peace pipe, or did you just hold it and meditate for a moment and pass it on? I, I smoked it as well. What was it like? Uh, cleansing. A one of a kind ceremony for a namesake worth the honor. Brooklyn Baptiste represents the Nez Perce tribe, and he knows the relationship between the United States and his people to be complicated. A historical battle site in Whitebird, uh, Idaho, where the government and the Nez Perce fought, but now we're here supporting the same government. Regardless of our history, whether it was yesterday or hundreds of years ago, we still try to thrive for a commonality and peace. We still have to work together. And they are. Just take a look. There's nothing complicated about this friendship. And so it gave him some of the medicinal things that we use today, we smudge with, we pray with, gave it to him to keep with his boat. It's no small gesture. Token of appreciation and acceptance. Because while boats come and go. That ship was going to protect for the next 30 years. These moments live in perpetuity. I wish I could be the captain of Idaho forever. All right, Joe, my apologies. Maybe I spoke too soon actually is a pretty beautiful sunset. So I might have roughed you up there a little prematurely, but uh, we'll be out here tomorrow for that christening. Technically still the third of a five step process, but we'll give you all those details here from Connecticut this Saturday. Joe, you know, Andrew, I was going to do some of your laundry for you while you're out of town, but I might be too busy this weekend now. <laughs> Fair I'll enough. get to it when I get back. Okay. All right. We'll talk offline. Thanks, Andrew. And if you want to watch the USS Idaho christening live tomorrow morning, it'll be at 8 a.m. here local time. We'll be streaming it on KTVB.com, KTVB Plus, and KTVB's YouTube channel. Also want to tell you the American Legion and Meridian will also have a live watch party at 8 a.m. If you don't want to get up that early on a Saturday, do not worry. There are a lot of watch parties throughout the day in different parts of the state. You can see right now some of those are listed on your screen. And if you want to share these or want to check in on them later, you can go to ktvb.com with full details. We'll be back after this.